I'm going to be doing a modification here on my 2001 WS6 Pontiac Trans Am because there's a serious problem. I wanted to share it online because I think more and more cars like this are going to have this issue as they get older and higher mileage. So basically what happened is my friend has a 2001 WS6 and he started losing power steering fluid. He couldn't figure out where it was going. He's a mechanic. He couldn't figure out at first. There was no leaks in the rack and pinion. The power steering pump looked good. The lines looked good. There's really not a lot to look at. But then what he finally found out what was happening is the power steering fluid was leaking into the antifreeze, into the cooling system. And when that happens, if it goes on long enough, it creates a, a really terrible mess. So here's the problem. The WS6 cars, or I should say 1998 to 2000 WS6 Trans Ams and SS Camaros come with a power steering cooler. And then I heard in 2001, 2002, they put them on all LS1 cars. So you have your power steering cooler here, and in your upper radiator hose, you have a power steering cooler. So the actual coolant flows through the center of the hose, and the power steering fluid flows around the outside edge. You know, it's like a double metal tube inside. And over time, whether it's mileage or age or both, that inside metal tube corrodes through and then your power steering fluid starts to leak into your antifreeze and you get a really nasty brown toothpaste looking sludge. I'm gonna post a picture right here showing like someone else on LS1 Tech that I found that had the exact same issue. It shows the nasty sludge in his radiator and the coolant in his power steering fluid. So the question is, does this car even need a power steering cooler? I can't think of really any cars that I know of that have one. I think it's pretty pointless. And it didn't come on all the cars. So on my 99 Trans Am, this car is not an original WS6. And it did not come with the power steering cooler. So my upper radiator hose, of course, I changed it to a newer one. But there's no metal pipe in there. There's no power steering cooler. It just has one single return line. It's hard to see. You can kind of see right there. It comes up to the bottom of the reservoir. And that's it. It doesn't go through any kind of a cooler. So the question is, does the power steering cooler work as a cooler or does it work as a heat exchanger? So I'm going to drive both my cars exactly about 30 minutes, the same route. It's early in the morning, so I shouldn't catch any traffic that's going to throw it off. And I'm going to check the coolant temperature. I'm sorry, the power steering fluid temperature after each drive. I'll check it in the actual reservoir. I'll hit the side of the pump. And I'll check the upper radiator hose as well. Now, I'm assuming that on the car with the cooler, the actual power steering fluid is only going to get as cool or actually might be warmer because it's going to stay the same temperature as the antifreeze returning in the upper radiator hose. So let's see what happens on my test drives. Here's with the power steering cooler. Jumps around a little bit. I'll say about 140 on average. Upper radiator hose. 140 makes sense they should be pretty much the same since the cooler is going through that metal pipe of the upper radiator hose and here is the non power steering cooler wow it's actually cooler amazing so is the power steering cooler heating or cooling i guess it's more of a heat exchanger it's doing a little bit of both now take in mind it's only 40 degrees out right now so it is a chance that the car without the power steering cooler is going to run cooler. Now if I shoot the metal, about the same. Upper hose probably is not going to work because there's a rubber. No, 150. 150. And the coolant itself, or the power steering fluid, is much cooler than the car with the power steering cooler. Wow. All right, so I will be doing a part two of this test once everything is installed. I'll explain more at the end of the video. But what I bought to do this job, I bought a derail cooler. This is a frame cooler. And I got a couple of uh, right angle and a 45 degree angle 6AN fittings from Evil Energy off Amazon. The cooler was about 50 bucks. These were about $10 a piece. I technically didn't need these right angle ones. I could have just got 3 8 nipples coming off the end, but then the hose is gonna have to stretch a little longer, and I think one of the hoses is gonna be really close. So I bought that, bought some stainless steel hardware. I am not gonna cable tie it on, like I've seen a lot of people on LS1 Tech do, because the weight of this power steering cooler is gonna be hanging upside down, and I work at a place that makes plastic cable ties, and they do fail, so I don't want my power steering you know, cooler falling five years from now and dangling on the ground. 
Now he's got some Lucas power steering fluid with some conditioners for the seal since the car is kind of old. I also bought upper radiator hose here from Gates. This was $15.40 and this is for a 98 to 99, I'm saying 98 to 2000 non-WS6 car without the power steering cooler. Some derail transmission slash power steering 3 8 hose was about $16. Not sure if I'm going to need it, but I'm doing a transmission cooler afterwards, so I'll be using that anyway. And then a 3 8 barb. Again, I don't know if I'm going to need it, but I'm going to need it for my transmission cooler, so I bought a 5-pack there. We're pretty cheap. So, let's get this car jacked up and see what we got going. Okay, so I have the car jacked up on the driver's side, only off the frame, of course. I have a jack stand on there. Now, I'm going to have to drain the antifreeze down, only down to below the bottom of this upper radiator hose on the driver's side. I don't have to go any farther than that, because I'm not going to lose any coolant. Now, I'm going to lose a little bit of coolant that's in the hose. Hopefully, when I start draining, that will kind of backflow out of there and I won't make too much of a mess. But I'll have some cardboard down just in case. To drain the coolant, pretty simple. Passenger side, come underneath here. And you'll see that little drain right there. Let me see if I can get my hand on there. So basically, put a bucket under here. You turn this right here. You're going to need like a pair of pliers. Try not to break the thing off. And let it drain down to about that point. Now take the upper radiator cap off, otherwise it's not going to drain very quickly. Right, I'm going to take off the upper air box just to make it easier because I think getting the hose out of here, I'm going to be struggling with it with the air box in the way. So easy, two clips, pops out. You have to undo two wire connectors, one here on your mat here, and then you just take a flathead screwdriver or a wrench. Loosen that clamp and the whole thing pulls right off. Now that I'm drained, next step is to squeeze this clamp here, that clamp there, and remove the upper hose and see what happens. Now the, tra or the power steering lines are still connected. I'm probably just going to try to get the pipe to the bottom of the car and deal with it from there. Now to do it, I have this little fancy tool. You put this on the clamp, squeeze it, it holds it tight so that way you're not fighting it. But you could do it with pliers. I've done it with pliers many times. All right, so I was able to get it all the way down. Actually, I made very little mess. The hose up top was completely dry, no problems. So I just have to do these two little hose clamps that go to you know, the power string pump and the wrecking pinion. Squeeze these guys, pop it off, and then run those to my, tra or my uh, cooler I'm gonna put in. Now, I'm probably gonna have to lengthen one of the hoses. I don't think this one's gonna reach, but we'll see. I might just run a brand new hose instead of splicing that hose. We'll see what I do. Like I thought, the longer hose here will definitely reach where I'm putting my cooler. The shorter hose, yeah, there's no way. I'm going to have to splice it. Uh, I can use my 3-8 splice on this, but I think I'm going to do, this hose goes directly up to the reservoir, and it's a single hose clamp. I'm just going to replace that entire hose all the way down here. That way I don't have an extra splice. But so I don't make a mess, I'm going to hold it down and drain it till I am not losing any more power steering fluid. I have my new hose going up to the reservoir. I'm going to use almost all of it, this five foot section from the rail. Like I said, I'll put all the part numbers I used into the video description. So now I'm going to mount my cooler. Now, most people mount it behind this deflector, which is exactly what I'm going to do too. I don't think it really needs any airflow because I think the cooler is pretty pointless anyway. So I'm going to mount it using these slats right here. I'll have my fender washer in there. There's holes on the actual mounting brackets. It'll mount like so and then connect up and I'll tighten everything up and refill and bleed the power steering. And then once I take it for the final test drive, you know, that's going to show is this power steering cooler actually doing anything. I'm hoping it's going to come in lower temperature than my red card that doesn't have any cooler at all. Here's what I bought. I bought quarter inch, one inch long bolts small washer. I have this rubber matting here. I'm going to put in between so it's not rubbing directly on the car. This will go through that slot I showed you. And then on top of the slot, I'm going to have to fish in there. There's this big fender washer and then a lock nut. Everything's stainless steel. Nothing will rust. I can take it apart and I don't have to worry about it falling down the road. Now, the new power steering cooler is complete. Hoses are tight. AM fittings are tight. This thing is solid. It is not going anywhere. It was a little tricky to get my Wash, big fender washers in there with a the nut, but I was able to do it with a couple wrenches, no problem. All I got to do now is fill it up and fill up the antifreeze. All right, I have the new upper radiator hose on, 
power steering coolers on. I filled the antifreeze. I filled the power steering fluid. One bottle was barely enough. Once it cycles and I get all the air out, I probably have to get some more power steering fluid. No big deal. Clamps are tight. Everything's ready to go. So I'm going to jack up the passenger side now, get both wheels off the ground. And one guy showed you just kind of turn your wheels back and forth with the key on, not running. And then that should bleed the air out. And then I'll start the car and I'll do the same thing. I'll check for leaks and so on. And then I also have to probably bleed my antifreeze. So I just let it run with the cap off and uh, wait till I don't see any more bubbles. Make sure that it actually cycles and the car doesn't overheat, but it shouldn't because I really didn't lose any antifreeze in the engine itself. So basically, I just have to bleed this before all the bubbles come out. Here they come. Eventually the antifreeze should drop when the thermostat opens, and that'll be it. I'll it up and done. Okay, moment of truth. I returned from my 30 minute drive. This is with my aftermarket power steering cooler. Say 100 degrees, not bad. So with the factory power steering cooler, I was at 140. My 99 Trans Am that has no power steering cooler at all was about 120. So pretty good. 20 degrees cooler than not having one, and it's not even in airflow. It's behind the uh, air deflector. I checked up a radiator hose. Should be about 150. Yeah, 158. So. It definitely helped. It's cooler than the factory cooler. It's cooler than without having a cooler. So is it worth doing? Uh, I still don't think it's necessary. Honestly, you could probably just splice those two hoses together that came off of the upper radiator hose, make them shorter. Just bring them straight up to the reservoir, done, and then change the upper radiator hose. And then you would look exactly how a Trans Am looks without having the power steering cooler. So. Where that leaves me now is in about six months in June, because right now it is December. I'm going to wait for a really hot day. I want it to be around 90 degrees. I'm going to take this car for a same drive, my red car for a same drive, and my friend's 99 Trans Am, which has the factory power steering cooler. And let's see which one is the coolest after doing the same drive in the summer. So if you want to put your guess in the comments, I will definitely put a link on this video once that video is done. I hope you learned something. I hope you uh, nip this in the butt before it actually becomes a problem. This car only has 26,000 miles, but I don't want to deal with this issue. I don't know if it's an age thing or a mileage thing. I mean, it could just be the car is you know, almost 20 years old and it's corroding from the inside. So anyway, thanks again for watching.